picture this I'm a bag of dicks, put me to your lips I am sick, I will punch your baby bear in his shit Give me lip, I'ma send you to the yard Get a stick, make a switch I can end the conversation real quick Let's go. What's going on guys? Away from Revolution here, here at the Frederick Constant Manufacturer in Plano, Watt, Geneva. And I am so excited. I just got off a plane from New York. I couldn't sleep because I was just sitting there thinking about the watch that we're gonna launch. So it is my great pleasure to first introduce my buddy Niels Egerding, who is the MD of Frederick Constant, but I have referred to him as the watch boss here. I like, I like that term, watch boss, right? Yeah. And we're about to launch our first collaboration, Frederick Constant Times Revolution Monolithic FP for Future Past. S for salmon, and it is a watch I am completely, completely in love with. So why am I in love with the watch? Well, and why is it called the FP? Well, check it out, here it is. It is the monolithic, so it is a watch that removes 26 components, including the balance wheel, the hairspring, the escapement, and replaces that with a monolithic silicon oscillator, which vibrates at 40 hertz, dude, which is 288,000 vibrations per hour, or 80 beats per second. And that is the future component of it. But the past, the past component is that we got together and we decided we wanted to design a watch that looks like a beautiful 1940s style gentleman's chronometer connecting the entire history of watchmaking. But first question is, how are you, sir? I'm very good. And I'm very excited also about this collaboration. And I love the design that you did, by the way. We have to mention that also because we started in March last year with the launch. And this is, uh, this is continuation exclusive with you, but a complete new design also. Well, thank you so much. So, you know, Neil, like, first question I have for you is, is, you know, there have been other brands that have attempted to do these silicone oscillators before, but they always did them as these sort of like super high concept watches in very small quantities. I love the fact that Frederick Constant has always represented incredible value for money uh, and trying to make the very best accessible to people. And so you put this oscillator in a watch that is, to me is incredibly accessible. That's under 5,000 euro, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Why was that important to you? Well, the mission we have is let more people enjoy luxury. And everything what we do, we try to aim to keep the price accessible. Um, and the initial thought for the oscillator was also that it should fit into a small size, open heart aperture that we always have as a DNA. And with a simple, I say simple, but as simple as possible movement. Right. That it's ready for large scale production. Large scale production means the production can keep up. They, they spin the machines, and we can then make it accessible. Amazing. You know, the caliber of, I'm not mistaken, the FC810 is to me a real revelation. So let's talk about some of the people that are involved in this watch. First of all, there's Peter Stas, the, 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 the founder of Frederick Constant, and I believe he sits on the board of a company called Flexus, where there's also a genius named Nima Tulu, who came up with this incredible oscillator. Tell me a little bit about this, and how that amazing invention ended up in this watch. Well, Peter was not, to, 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 to correct you, Peter was on the board of the incubator, yes, Delft. And there they met. And Nima Tulu, uh, he's, he's a brilliant guy. And Peter is always intrigued about uh, development, innovation, and uh, they, they start to meet each other. And he started to explain what he could do. And I remember the day that Peter called me. He called me, Niels, I have now something. I think we should do it. I think we should go. And in that day, it, we started to collaborate. That's and we cool. always ha have created innovations with collaborations. Right. And typically this was also a very good connection. Incredible. You know, so guys, let's just walk you through the, what this oscillator is, what the monolithic oscillator is. You remove 26 parts from the watch, including the hairspring, the balance wheel, the lever and escapement. And instead of that, you have one monolithic, uh, you know, sort of architectural element that vibrates at the incredible speed of 40 hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour or 80 beats per second. And when you see the seconds hand on this watch, because every chronometer has to have a seconds hand, it's almost like it's impossible to understand. It seems like it's floating, you know, silently in space. Um, and it's funny because uh, people who are like watch nerds like me are like, oh, is it a bit like the spring drive? I'm like, actually, no, the spring drive has no real oscillator. This is an oscillator that's yeah. just beating so fast. At 80 beats per second, it seems like it's just floating through space. I mean, it's so cool. It is, it is, it is. It's eight, indeed what you said, the 80 steps per second. That's the best comparison. A regular automatic is eight, sec eight steps per second. And this 80 step steps, so it's huge. In addition to that, guys, this oscillator is so energy efficient, right? So the same caliber that normally has a 38-hour power reserve, when it was added to this oscillator, they came up with an incredible 80 hours of power reserve. Now, a lot of that also has to do with that this incredible monolithic invention. The 
angle of its amplitude is only six degrees, whereas in a normal balance wheel, it's like 300 degrees. In addition to that, it's amagnetic, so it's completely not affected by magnetism as well. And it's one of the very few watches in the world that actually uses no lubrication at the escapement as well, or Where? the oscillator. And that's incredible too. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, absolutely. Nowhere, uh, silicon, silicon is a material what uh, has proven in the medical industry already like long time ago. And nowhere, it's no friction. It's very, very thin also to use, flexible. That's incredible, man. And, and you know, guys, we're gonna bring you upstairs to you know, where the magic happens and show you how, Much you, know, you, you know, it's, it's, it's poised, which is really cool because the oscillator, for example, ha is not fixed by an axis. It's just contained within the special bridge, which you see here at six o'clock. Yeah. But you know, what I really wanna say, honestly, guys, is that for me, when I saw this, I was like, this is one of the greatest achievements in modern watchmaking of all time. And the fact that Frederick Constant then took that achievement and made it accessible to people and then gave us the opportunity to create this beautiful timepiece a watch that we call the FP, the future past that resonates with the style of the past, nice right? Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, which resonates with the style of the past with this sort of like, you know, frosted salmon finish for the dial, these apply brigade numerals from, you know, really at the, the 30s, 40s, or even the 50s. But then at six o'clock, where normally the seconds hand would be in a, a vintage watch, here, it, it, the oscillator takes predominance. And of course, you've got a central seconds hand that's floating eerily through space because of this incredible vibrational speed. Dude, thank you so much for letting us collaborate with you. We thank love you. this watch, man. I'm happy with this collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So what's going on guys, here with my buddy Roman Vallette, high complication watchmaker here at Frederic Constant. One of the guys that's in charge of this project with the monolithic, and what we're gonna see now is how he places the oscillator onto the movement of the caliber FC810, right? So what's really interesting here is you'll see the only part that's really fixed to it is in fact the escapement wheel. And actually the entire oscillator, which includes the sort of four bladed spring structure, which has an amplitude of six degrees, is actually free. There's no axis mounting it to the movement, which is incredible. It's just kept in place by this incredible bridge. So now we're gonna watch Roman put that together. So come check that out. Here, for example, so what you're gonna see here is the bridge. The bridge. And there's actually, as we are saying, so the oscillator is retained by this bridge, but there's no axis. It's not fitted to an axis. It's just, it's free to oscillate within this, this bridge. But the bridge is what keeps it in place and also allows it to ensure that it doesn't deform past its breaking point as well. So it's able to pass all the sort of shock tests of what's, you know, uh, that you need as well. So right now what we're gonna see is Homa is going to place the oscillator in position so that it's in contact with the escapement wheel. Then he's gonna place a bridge on top of that just to show you how that, guy, uh, how that works. It's amagnetic, um, it's also extremely efficient as well. So it, actually it replaces 26 actual components. It's actually interesting when you, you guys look at this, even when it's functioning, you can't even tell because it's oscillating so fast and the, the, the degree of amplitude is so little, the way you can tell that the it's just the second hand is moving forward in this incredible pace, right? But it is just so cool. Now, of course, he has to be very careful when he's placing the oscillator in place as well because it is um, uh, you know, pretty delicate. But once it's in place with a the bridge, then it, it can receive any kind of, you know, sort of a normal shock and, and it, and it um, will not be affected. Also, the other great advantage of having an oscillator that vibrates really, really fast, is that it has much greater autonomy from the micro shocks that a wristwatch receives on almost a constant basis. So, you know, in every single way conceivable, that this is such an innovative um, movement, such an incredible achievement in chronometry as well. Actually, we should talk about that too. Um, Romain, est-ce est que vous faites des casques avec ça? Oui, à l'avenir, on pourra faire du casque. Aujourd'hui, on est toujours en phase d'évolution. Mais bien sûr, dans le temps, on pourrait faire du casque. Okay. So, you know, he's also saying like that you are different phases of evolution. So the idea that, you know, just a, a year ago, basically, they came out with the monolithic was already so groundbreaking. The way in which the monolithic is regulated, you'll see inside are there's these opposable weights. So it's just like a free-sprung balance wheel. And the more you change the angle of the weights, the more you change the inertia of the balance, or the oscillator in this case, right? So the objective eventually is to use this technology to achieve incredible chronometric results, but that's coming in different phases. Phase one was obviously the, you know, the, the uh, industrial industrialization of the watch and actually producing watches. Phase two will probably be cost, and then phase three will probably be to reduce the errors um, even greater. But. Uh, 
Uh, so now we're gonna go see how these watches are regulated. So of course, when it's beating at 40 hertz uh, with an amplitude of just six degrees, it doesn't work on a normal witchy machine for regulating it, right? So actually, Frederick Constant had to develop an all new machine using a laser that's capable of measuring 250,000 times per second to form the regulation system for this watch. Let's go check that out now. So guys, right now what's happening is that laser is actually measuring all the different oscillations of that 80 beats per second. Well, actually this machine is capable of 250,000 measurements per second. So that's the laser that you can see that's actually capturing the oscillations of this incredible monolithic oscillator. And then if you look at the screen now, you'll see that it has a deviation of 1.96 seconds per day. We're gonna play baby foot or foosball, but and I'm gonna ask him also questions about Frederick Constant. So my first question for you, Nils, why is it important that Frederick Constant does the most innovative things, for example, the monolithic, but prices it excessively? Let me explain. First of all, we are a young watch brand. It's, it's difficult to do both together. Eh? Oh, <laughs> so we are a young watch brand. Oh, and shit. We, and we have to copy. <laughs> So we are young watch brands and we have to compete with the giants above us, the big ones, that are and have an existence of 200 years. And to gain credibility, it's very important. Ah! So I did the same thing. I did the same thing. Because I'm not focused. <laughs> <laughs> to gain credibility, uh, to gain also trust of uh, the watch community, we focused really on our own money for two complication. And that was already back in 2000. And it resulted in 2004 in our first in-house movement. And from there, from there, we really went on with the tourbillon. Uh, we had perpetual calendar, right. uh, chronograph, flyback. Yes. So a lot of innovative products that right. helped us to go up. Right. And um, and that's I think that spirit that Peter started. I will st st certainly continue with it. Amazing. So what would be the future plans for something like the monolithic? I mean, I know that you want to make it more and more accurate. It was the first phase was obviously to get it. So, so that it was actually in production as a watch. Uh, yeah. Cost certification on the table. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, we, this is, uh, nobody, nobody sees that, but the monolithic is really in heavy development. Right. In parallel of the production that, that runs now. And uh, the idea of the monolithic is really that in the coming two years, we bring it to high precision. Right. And that we have really have an, uh, an, an ex an, a new certification to, in collaboration right. with, uh, with an official uh, time lab, for instance, or certification. Right. And it should be more precise than COSC. Wow, amazing. That's, that's the aim. That's incredible. The, the 40 hertz has also the uh, right. capabilities to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's such an amazing watch. Like, you know, it, it's almost so little energy consumption to go for 38 hours of power, uh, power reserve to 80 hours with the same movement is incredible. The fact that it's amagnetic, not influenced by magnetism, needs no lubrication. It's just mind blowing, dude. I mean, uh, it is. it's so cool. It is. Any other models you're putting it in? Uh, well, besides that you have done a b brilliant design, yes. we also going to put it in, uh, and that's of course, something is still, still new, but I will do a sneak peek also. When we deliver the watch uh, of the Slimline, we also going to do a high life version. Wow, so that's exciting. I think that's, everyone's been waiting for that. That's, yeah, yeah, that's definitely everybody is waiting for that. Yes. I think we both not really great. Oh! oh. <laughs> As you were saying, that. that's impressive. <laughs> and can I just ask you, like, you know, when I approach you with this idea, this design um, for FP, future past, I mean, what was the you know, compelling reason to want to work together, you know, for you? Well, for, first of all, you are uh, such a credible person within the industry, and, and yeah, you are one of the biggest watch magazines, but also educational tool. Right. And I was honored, actually, that oh, you came to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I think it's also for us important right. to have collaborations, yes. especially in the media. Well, that's cool. You help us to go up, right. to tell the story. Yeah. And at the same time, we help you with a unique piece. But brother, I stand by the fact that I honestly think that that is one of the greatest achievements Sorry, in watchmaking in the last 50 years. I mean, and what you guys have done with that is incredible. The fact that you had the courage to do it, the fact that you've made it accessible, and the fact that you've given me the opportunity to do something with you. Brother, I appreciate it. Thank me you. Me too. Thank Thanks, you very guys. much. Cheers.